welcome to Mosaic. I'm your host, Susan Shulman Pertnoy. Mosaic is Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County's weekly news magazine, exploring the most critical issues facing Jews here and around the world. By some estimates, 61 million Americans are living with a disability. Today, we're talking with Marley Matlin, the award-winning actress, about her deafness, her activism, and her support of the Jewish community. We'll be right back with Mosaic. You are the book that lights the spark and the hand that passes the torch, the fuel that powers the change that betters the world across town, across oceans, the hand that soothes the spirit that survived the unthinkable. You are there in the darkest of times to strengthen our community. Moving in storage, your superhero movers. More moving horror stories. Think it's a good idea for your friends to show up at Pizza and Pier to help you move? Wrong. Uh, Amateurs. Is there a real mover out there? As a former police officer, I've heard all of the moving horror stories. But you can trust me and my pros, and we'll have you saying... Opa! Call Star Star Greek. Good Greek, moving in storage, your superhero movers. The Levin Palace at Morse Life is leasing luxury residences for ages 65 plus, offering more than first class amenities and white glove service. Life at the Palace is like life aboard a luxury cruise ship with more things to enjoy life now. More fabulous food, more fun, more friends, more family, more freedom, more future. Morse Life is more life. Live it at the Palace. Start your fabulous future now. Call 561-537-3402. Joining us today is award-winning actress, author, activist, Marley Matlin, and her interpreter, Jack Jason, who's been with her for over 30 years. Welcome, both of you, to Mosaic. Thank you very much. Marley, you're such an accomplished woman. What role did your upbringing play in your success? Actually, I had a great family. Um, they were extremely supportive from day one. Uh, uh, they realized that I was able to, uh, I mean, I had dreams, and they supported them all along the way to be whatever I wanted to be. And one of the main uh, tenets that they gave me was uh, the fact that I got bat mitzvahed as a young girl. Um, that really helped me as I studied, as I worked on my Hebrew portion, and, and other uh, parts of Judaism and going to Sunday school, going to Friday night services and, being, and going to Shabbat, making me feel included, making me understand what everyone, what everyone has a responsibility to, to do when it comes to inclusion. All the while, while I was an actress in a small theater for the deaf, uh, and I knew that I wanted to be an actor from a very young age, and they encouraged that. Um, I mean, they, they really acknowledge that there were, um, I mean, that we all have accomplishments that we want to achieve, uh, whether it is to be a teacher or a lawyer or so forth. And my parents really, and my brothers, gave me those, that foundation uh, to be who I am today. I know you lost your hearing at age of 18 months. How did your family adapt to your deafness? Did, did they all learn sign language, or how, how did they work that out? Well, at first when they found out when I became deaf at 18 months, as you said, they were uh, shocked, obviously. They were confused. Um, they, they had no idea of how to raise a deaf child. And it wasn't, uh, there weren't a lot of resources out there, as there are today. And so what they did was that, well, actually, they grieved, but not for too long. And they went and met people. They talked to psychologists. They talked to teachers. They talked to those people specialized in deafness, and they asked doctors who weren't that helpful. Uh, they did their homework, and they rolled up their sleeves, and eventually they introduced me to American Sign Language, which is extremely critical, a, a great tool for communication, and so forth. But they gave me a, num a great deal of independence, 
And I mean, they told me to, to go out and explore, to check out the neighborhood. And, and I was a bit spoiled, but in a good way I was spoiled. That's great. And how about, were there any issues with schooling? Well, uh, initially my parents visited a number of schools, deaf schools, uh, which at the time were called institutions, and they were located throughout the Midwest. And I was uh, in Chicago. So we went to Ohio, we went to Indiana, and they visited a number of these wonderful schools for the deaf, but they decided to keep me at home. Uh, and eventually I went to what is called a mainstream school, which is a school for hearing kids in which they have a deaf program within that. It's, they're both together, and that's, oh, that's, that's part of who I am today. The friends that I have today, um, the, edu the educators that I work with, the mentors, as a result of mainstreaming, and I lucked out. Speaking of mentors, you met Henry Winkler at a very young age um, when you were acting. Can you tell us about that story? I know he plays an important part in your life. He did. Henry became my mentor the minute we met, when I was 12 years old. Uh, I was in the theater of the deaf, as I mentioned earlier, and he was paying a visit. He just happened to be in town for a documentary and a charity event that he was doing. So we invited him, he came, and he was the most famous person to ever pay a visit to our center. And I knew who he was because I watched Happy Days. Of course. <laughs> I mean, who didn't know who the Fonz was at the time? And that's how old I am. And in any case, uh, so I went right up to him and I said, hi, I'm Marley and I'm going to be an actor in Hollywood just like you, just like you. I knew that I could do what he did. Why not? And we became friends and we kept in touch over the years and also with his wife, Stacy. You're missing one, you've got to tell this one part of the story. It's, I, I read it in your book. You, your mom, when, he, when you asked him, you said, I want to be just like you. Tell what your mom said and what his answer was. Well, well, I went up to Henry and I said, I wanted to be an actor in Hollywood just like you in Hollywood. And my mother saw that. I was talking with Henry, uh, telling him all my dreams and hopes. And Henry was nodding politely. And just before he was about to give me advice, my mom took him aside and spoke to him. Uh, of course, I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't see what they were talking about. And Henry was nodding politely. Um, that's the way Henry is. And listening to my mother, um, and when, he was, when she was done, he, he looked me straight in the eye and said, Marley, sweetheart, you can be the, anything that you want to be. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Because what she was telling Henry was to not give me too much encouragement, not to raise my expectations too high as an actor in Hollywood. Because this just wasn't possible for a deaf kid. She knew about, uh, after reading a lot of magazines or watching a lot of news, how hard it was for people who can hear in Hollywood and all the rejection that takes place. And she was being realistic. She was being realistic. She was just being a mom, a Jewish mom. And so, but Henry had another perspective. He understood where she was coming from, but at the same time, he wasn't gonna tell a 12-year-old girl that she couldn't be an actor, that she couldn't be what she wanted to be, which meant that I could work for it. That is great. We need to take a break. We'll be back after this brief message. Coming up, actress and activist Marley Matlin on the influence her Jewish upbringing has had on her life. You are the book that lights the spark and the hand that passes the torch, the fuel that powers the change that betters the world across town, across oceans the hand that soothes the spirit that survived the unthinkable. You are there in the darkest of times to strengthen our community. Eat, drink, and enjoy Shabbat services at Temple Beth El's Friday Night Happenings. Cocktail reception and kosher dinner at 5.30, followed by our creative, musically-driven Shabbat service. Traditional to progressive, the food and music change every Friday, and you'll want to stay for complimentary dessert. Plan to spend the whole evening here, and you'll walk away and you'll say, Wow, we're coming back next week. Welcome at Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat services at Temple Beth El. Open to everyone. Join us every Friday night. 
Are you concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism and other challenges facing the Jewish community? Join us in doing something about it. Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County has a variety of opportunities for you to stand up for what you care about by advocating, volunteering, learning, and connecting. Visit jewishpalmbeach.org upcoming for a full list of opportunities coming up near you. Moving horror stories. Slick salesmen makes you a great deal. Sleazy movers hold everything hostage until you pay a higher fee. As a former police officer, I've heard all of the moving horror stories. But you can trust me and my pros, and we'll have you saying, Opa! Call Star Star Greek. Good Greek, moving in storage. Your superhero movers. We're back with actress Marley Matlin discussing her life and her achievements. You won an Oscar and a Golden Globe for your very first performance in a feature film, Children of a Lesser God, at the very young age of 21. How did you deal with that fame? I, um, I think I was blessed with not having any experience prior to the first movie. And so therefore I was, I guess you could say what you got from me was pretty genuine. I operated uh, genuinely. I, um, there, was no, um, there was no concern or worry on my part about uh, ego, no concern or worry on my part. I mean, I, just, I just entered the whole industry uh, innocently, uh, doing something that I love to do, doing my thing, discovering new things, and uh, working on a film for three months on an amazing film shoot that I'll never forget. And I, I mean, I still remember all these years later. And I, um, I, I mean, winning the Golden Globe at first was a shock. Winning the Oscar was even more shocking. Um, there was a lot going on at that time of my life during that period, um, uh, which I managed to deal with uh, well. And how, how did Hollywood deal with your win? Were they knocking down the doors with job opportunities? Well, when I was nominated and when I was ca called up to the stage to receive my awards, in both cases, Hollywood seemed to be very excited because I was a fresh face. I was someone um, who came from a small little town in Chicago. It's that sort of typical Hollywood dream. Uh, and, 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 you know, especially for being a representative of the deaf community, who is she? And I'm like, hello. And, and Hollywood was very warm in welcoming me, accepting and excited, friendly, um, but that was on the outside. And I guess the real Hollywood I discovered was more than just that, that I had to break down a great number of barriers and walls still to be recognized equally in Hollywood. That was, I mean, it, it's still happening to this day. It's still happening to this day. I have to do that. Well, you've got such determination. You've managed to have an incredibly successful career in Hollywood, so you've got a lot of clout. I might have a lot of clout because of the name that I carry with me, the Oscar winner Marley Matlin, Golden Globe winner Marley Matlin, making myself known. And I make a lot of noise, but I can't do it alone. I have to work with my peers in the deaf community as well as my peers in the hearing community, in the acting community. All of us have to support each other and lift each other up to make things happen. As Hillary Clinton said, it takes a village. It does. Is it true that 95% of disabled characters in television and film are played by actors without disabilities? You are exactly right. That is a terrible So only 5% is, is authentic and it's a, a terrible statistic. And that's what we are doing here today, is to make that change happen. That really, um, so what is being done? Well, we're making noise. Uh, we're working with the National Association for the Deaf in Maryland, uh, who works on a civil rights level with people who are deaf and hard of hearing. And a lot of people in the entertainment industry, um, people not only who are deaf, actors who are amazing and talented, um, but as well as our peers who are hearing, who have joined us in efforts to uh, change attitudes, to support and break 
that crazy statistic that you just quoted, 95% of roles that are disabled are not played by disabled people. Uh, I mean, it's really, I mean, roles should be played authentically. There is so many unbelievable disabled actors and oh, deaf sure. actors who are out there. And it's just a matter of, as you mentioned, uh, exerting my clout or uh, working through my agent. Well, I mean, it's, Hollywood is like high school, but with money. So if you can imagine that, you have to work with those attitudes. The power that people yeah. exert, the, I mean, what can I say? In 2016, you participated in the very first Hollywood Roundtable discussion for inclusivity. Has that made any progress into, into? That, that roundtable really did make noise and it did make a difference. It, it, I think it made a breakthrough because we actually spoke up for the first time as a group to speak clearly that this kind of hiring practice needs to stop, that you need to cast uh, disabled roles authentically. And the deaf community has been since then much louder than ever. And I don't anticipate us to ever stop. Uh, it's, I mean, to, to take advantage of who we are as individuals who are maybe deaf or who have a disability, we are able to play those roles. Uh, and maybe we can't be singers as deaf people, um, maybe some can, but there are so many talented actors in our community who are able to take on these roles, uh, whether you're talking about the big screen or little screen. And, and even on stage and theater too as well. Why was it so important you, to you to become an activist for inclusion and disabilities? You could have just easily sat back and focused in on your career. If I sat back and you know, relied on my career, I think I probably, I mean, they could certainly do it without me, but I understand where they're going, what they're going through, because it's what I went through, and I need to work, and I need to make my voice heard. I need to do things that I love to do, and that means be, getting involved, and I'm, and I'm tired of, of, you know, I've, I've, I've experienced that frustration of, of hitting up against a wall, of, a barrier. Who are they to define us? Is, you know, I mean, this is what my parents told me, and this is what I should need to do. You're right, we have to take another break. We'll be right back after this brief message. Coming up, actress and activist Marley Matlin on the changes she hopes to see in the future. You are the book that lights the spark and the hand that passes the torch, the fuel that powers the change that betters the world across town, across oceans. The hand that soothes the spirit that survived the unthinkable. You are there in the darkest of times to strengthen our community. Picture living aboard a luxury cruise ship with first-class service and the best amenities 24-7. Life at Tradition is just like a cruise ship that doesn't leave port. With more fabulous food, more fun with friends and family, a more fulfilling future, more care when you need it, and more freedom when you don't. Our elegant assisted living residences provide so much more, so you can make the most of every day. Rent an apartment at Morse Life and see how much more life can be. Are you concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism and other challenges facing the Jewish community? Join us in doing something about it. Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County has a variety of opportunities for you to stand up for what you care about by advocating, volunteering, learning, and connecting. Visit jewishpalmbeach.org upcoming for a full list of opportunities coming up near you. What's the best kept secret in new cars? It's that you can get a brand new Mini at Brayman Mini Palm Beach for under $21,000, which includes free maintenance for three years. No kidding. Plus, free membership to the fun Mini Club of South Florida for road trips and autocross, and even more with club room social events. Mini is more than just driving. It's about having fun with the Brayman Mini community. Learn about Brayman Mini at BraymanMini.com. Minis for under $21,000, free maintenance, Mini Club, and Club Brayman benefits. It's a no-brainer. Brayman Mini is the right choice. 
We're back with Marley Matlin. You speak about an obligation to live generously. What does that mean? I'm a mom of four, and I, as a mother, which I seem to come to naturally, I think it comes to any person who's a mother, most mothers, I think, no. um, I think so. is to teach children about responsibilities, common sense, uh, living generously, as I call it, and, and all those things that come with, with being a parent. And as an actor, as an activist, as an author, as a producer, and all the, the hats that I've worn, I've had so many people come up to me and say, I want to be an actor in Hollywood. How can I do this? And even though they're young, the first thing I always say is, first of all, finish school. Uh, please finish school. And please go, if you can, to college. But, uh, it, you know, whatever choice you make, it's, it's important to make that choice. And I tell them to listen to themselves, uh, listen to others out there, because if, this is the message I was given. Um, make good choices and mostly communicate. Uh, that's what living generously is about, is communicating with each other, exploring with each other, sharing that message with each other. Uh, it's a, it's, it may be a difficult challenge, but because I was able to do it, they can do it. Do you at all see your life through a Jewish lens? I do see myself through a Jewish lens. Uh, uh, a great number of ways, especially on a, a day like today, being that it's Holocaust Remembrance Day. Um, I am very proud to have been bat mitzvahed. I am uh, very proud of the Jewish values I was given by my parents. And being today the person that I am as a result of my Jewish values, they played a big role in who I am. And we as a Jewish community really do know how to take care of each other. And we know how to um, donate, to give. We know how to look out for those in our community who may be elderly, uh, people who are uh, not as, as privileged as we are. And uh, we perform mitzvahs. That's who we are as Jews. So I've learned a great deal in terms of values from my parents uh, through my Jewish lens, as you call it. After this interview, we're heading up to a Jewish Federation event honoring women who are Lions of Judah. Those women are the most generous supporters of our Federation. What unique perspective do women bring to any discourse about social justice? Women um, bring um, empathy. Women bring uh, the ability to express themselves. I think women bring the ability to give, to nurture, to take care of. And we also have the maturity and intelligence that men may not necessarily have of what we can do for the world. A lot of times I put myself before any other person when I'm doing something. We as women do that. We tend to put others. And then I think, uh oh, I need to take care of myself too. But that's just what we as women do. That's what my mother did. And my grandmother did. And my aunts. We're going to switch gears for a second. You recently went on your first trip to Israel. Can you tell us about that experience? My first trip to Israel was one trip that I will never ever forget. I still talk about it to this day, to anyone who's willing to listen to me talk. The one thing that really, I mean among the many things that I saw there, was to visit the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, and I actually visited a base where they had a variety of individuals with disabilities working on the base. Really? There were no barriers to disabilities we need to for learn people about in the armed forces in Israel. There was no judgment, there was no barriers, so they were all welcomed, all individuals with varying disabilities, people working. And I met with these individuals and I was in awe because they, the government, the Israeli Defense Forces, put them to good use, as they would anybody, d disabled or not, to work on and using their skills. They, they necessarily aren't working on the battlefields, but they are a huge part of defending Israel and that organization, the government. That, that's amazing. We in our community, are trying to become very inclusive 
and it's very important for us. As a matter of fact, we have a wonderful Sunday school called the Yad Hebrew School. It's been in existence for 17 years, and it provides one-on-one -on -one services for children with multiple types of disabilities to teach them about Jewish life so they can participate that's and great. even give them bar and bat mitzvah training. So that's, that's one good. way that we're doing it. We're also training educators to become more adept at uh, teaching others with disabilities. People with disabilities deserve equal access to whatever is out there that we all get as individuals who don't have disabilities. Disability and individual disabilities need to be mainstreamed. Absolutely, completely, 100%. Thank you so much for joining us. We've run out of time. Thank you. Mosaic is brought to you by these generous sponsors and underwriters. Learn how you can support Mosaic by visiting jewishpalmbeach.org slash mosaic.